welcome and thank you for being interested in testing Backup Exec. In this video we will show you how to download and install a trial copy of Backup Exec and guide you through running your first backup. Before you start, it is recommended that you review the hardware and software compatibility list to ensure that the platform and hardware is fully supported with Backup Exec. These can be reviewed using the article at the link shown on screen. If the compatibility is valid, you are now ready to download the trialware. Open a browser and go to the main Veritas pages at www.veritas.com. From there, go to the Products menu and under Backup and Recovery, select Backup Exec. You may wish to review the information and links from here for further information about Backup Exec. From the top of the page, select the free 60-day trial link to go to the Trialware page. Before the Trialware version can be downloaded, you need to provide some basic information about contact details, job role and where you are. All fields need to be completed and the Terms and Conditions Agreement accepted before clicking Submit. You will then be taken to the Trialware download page. Click on the Download Now link to start the download, but be warned that this is 2 gigabytes, so may take a little while, depending on your internet connection. If any problems are seen starting the download, review the download instructions link for suggestions. An email will also be sent to the address you provide, with reference links to the Support and Vox community pages. Once the download has completed, go to the location where the file is saved and extract that zip file. This will expand out to show an ISO disk file that can be either written to a DVD or mounted within the operating system. We will mount this. From the mounted drive, run the browser.exe to start the installer. Select the language to run in and you will be taken to the installation screens. Getting started will provide links to useful documents and videos. Pre-installation will carry out a check of the system, confirm that it meets minimum requirements and that necessary components are installed. Review the result of these to identify any areas that may cause an issue during the install. There will also be a report of the results generated under the user temp folder. If any areas need correcting, resolve those and then rerun the environment checker to confirm the results. This will also be run during the installation. When you are confident everything appears correct, click the installation link to start the install. For the full Backup Exec server install, select Backup Exec and you'll be taken to the installation wizard. Accept the terms of the license agreement and click Next. Here you can select a typical or custom installation. The typical setup will by default select all agents and place all components on the C drive, including creating a SQL Express instance for Backup Exec to use. Although it is possible to change the Backup Exec path during the install, we will leave it on Typical Installation and click Next. The Environment Checker will then run and highlight any areas of concern. Click Next and you'll be taken to the license screen. This is where you would associate license files when the software has been purchased. It is also possible to run Backup Exec for 60 days without a license to evaluate the product, although some functionality such as central administration is not available while in trial. Click Next and you'll be warned about the trial version enabling various options that will need separate licenses to continue using after 60 days. Without purchasing and adding a license, backup jobs using those options will stop working after the 60 days. Here you are asked for details of the account we will configure Backup Exec with. That account must have local or ideally domain administration rights to this server. You are then asked where to install Backup Exec. You can leave this as default or target another location, although using the typical setup, the SQL Express installation will still be installed on the C drive. If you wish to configure the SQL to be elsewhere on the server, or even use a SQL setup on a remote server, you would need to run the custom installation instead. When you click Next, the system will grant the account the necessary rights to run Backup Exec. On this screen, you can configure any remote servers where you wish to have the Backup Exec remote agent installed, although this can also be done in the Backup Exec console once installation has completed. In this demonstration, we will not push any agents yet and just click Next. The system will display a summary screen confirming what is being installed. If any changes are needed, use the back key to go back to the previous screens. But if correct, click Install and it starts. 
A progress indicator is displayed and it will take about 10 minutes to install and configure the SQL Express instance and then install Backup Exec to use it. While this is running, let's discuss what you would see if we had chosen the custom installation instead. Most of the screens are similar with environment checks, license entry and the installation path for Backup Exec. But we would also have been provided a list of the agents to select what we require, additional languages for the Backup Exec console to be installed with, and also the option to either customize the SQL installation path on the server, or even use a SQL 2008 R2 Service Pack 2 or higher instance on a remote server. Once this installation completes, a reboot of the server will be required. Now Backup Exec is installed, let's have a look around the console. When you first open the Backup Exec console, you are taken to the home screen where we provide a summary of the system. Here we have graphs that show backup status, storage status and backup sizes, along with active alerts and links to useful documentation. Note that the licensing and maintenance section shows the 60 days trial period and will start counting down from today. When the system is licensed, that indicator will show the status of the maintenance contract instead. We have tabs for backup and restore where the servers to be backed up will be listed. At the moment, all we have listed is the backup exec server itself. The job monitor tab will show scheduled jobs in the top window and job histories in the bottom window. The storage tab is where we configure disk, tape, deduplication or cloud storage devices to be used as backup targets. The reports tab is where we can run pre-configured report definitions or create custom reports. The system menu is where we can view and change configuration for backup exec installed options and updates, access online information, run tools to assist with any support issues or access product information, including a local copy of the backup exec administrator's guide. So let's go through creating some backup storage and configuring a backup job to use that. Go to the storage tab and click configure storage. We are presented a list of possible storage for this server and the link bottom left will open the help pages explaining those in more detail. In this example, we will just define a local backup to disk folder by selecting disk space storage and then disk storage. We are then asked for the device name and an optional description. These are friendly names and can be anything you want, but the name must be unique in the server. You are then presented with a list of all available drives. Select a suitable local disk to place this on, ideally the best performing disk and not the system drive. Alternatively, configure this to go to a network share defined with a UNC path. You then select the concurrency setting, which, as the information below it explains, is the number of jobs that can run to that device at the same time. We will leave it on the default of two. You are then provided a summary screen before this storage is created. If any changes are needed, use the back key to go to the previous screens, or if correct, click finish and the device will be configured. Depending on the storage being added, a restart of the backup exec services may be required, but in this case, we do not need to do that. Now the backup storage has been created, let's define a simple job to backup data from this server. Go to the backup and restore tab and select the local server. As with other areas in the Backup Exec console, options are either available by right-clicking on the item to open the context menu, or by selecting the icon on the upper taskbar. We select Backup and Backup to Disk. This will open the Job Definition window where the selected items are on the left and Job Options schedules are on the right. Click Edit under each side to view or change the options above. If we click Edit under the selections, we can see that the complete server has been selected for backup but this can be changed to anything from the whole machine down to a single file. For this example, we will select a single folder. We then click on Edit under the Options. Depending on the agent options installed and the type of data selected, the options down the left will vary. We then click on Schedule, where we can select the time and days on which this job will run. For this example, we will set this to run daily at 8 p.m., the radio options below would allow us to configure the job to run now with no recurring schedule for a one-time backup, or to be created without a schedule where it would need to be started manually for each run. By default, jobs will be created with stages for a full and incremental backup. 
but if the incremental is not required, it can be removed by clicking the X at the top right of the stage, as we will now do. We can see that this job is configured to use any disk storage, but as we only have the single backup to disk storage defined, this will be used. Click OK to submit the job. If we go back to the job monitor screen, we can see this job is now configured and will run as the assigned schedule. For this demo, we'll run the job on demand by right clicking on the job and selecting run now to start the job. You can now monitor the progress of the running job in the job monitor screen. We can also double click on the job and see additional details. The job has completed and was successful. Once completed, the backup job log for this job will be available in the lower job history section. Double click on the job log to see details regarding the backup job. Now let's define a simple job to restore the data we have just backed up. Before we run the restore, let's delete the original folder. Now go to the Backup and Restore tab and select the local server. The restore option can be selected by right clicking on the server icon or by selecting the restore icon on the upper taskbar. This will open the restore wizard. This screen will show you types of data available for restore for a server. In this example, we only have files, folders, or volumes, so we select that. Select File and Folder Backups to a point in time option. We can now select the items to be restored. We then go through various screens for the restore options. The restore can be targeted to either the original location or a different location. For this example, we will restore these to the original location. On this screen, you can choose to either overwrite the existing file, skip if the file exists, or overwrite the file on disk if it is older, and select whether to restore security information. Here we have the option to restore or preserve existing junction points, mount points, and symbolic links if they are included in the data. In case if we need to run any additional commands or scripts before or after the job, they can be configured on this screen. The restore can be scheduled, but the default option is to run now, which we will use. We are shown a summary screen of the options and click finish to start the job. As before, we can now monitor the progress of this job in the job monitor screen and can double click that job to show more details. The job completes and was successful. The job log is now available in the job history section and if open shows details of the restore. If we then go to Windows Explorer we can see the data has now been restored. This concludes this demonstration where we have shown you how to download and install Backup Exec and run a basic backup and restore job. Thank you for watching this video and look out for others in the future. For formal training courses, please visit the Veritas Education Services page at www.veritas.com slash services slash education services slash training courses. Also remember to visit our support pages at www.veritas.com slash support for further information.